Today we'll be reviewing how to set up and operate the Welch Allen OAE hearing screener. The Welch Allen OAE hearing screener measures otoacoustic emissions, or OAEs, testing cochlear function in infants, children, and adults. The OAEs are generated by a series of clicks that are directed into the ear canal. The purpose of the screener is to provide rapid screening of distortion product otoacoustic emissions, or transient evoked otoacoustic emissions, at several frequencies. The screener is fast and easy to use, even on infants and small children. Just three button pushes turn on the device, and tests are completed on both ears in approximately 8 to 16 seconds per ear. Here's what is included with configuration number 39500, the OAE hearing screener system. To set up the device, place it on a stable counter or table where it will be used in a quiet testing environment. The location should be near a properly grounded wall outlet. Place it on the cradle, connecting the micro USB to the back of the cradle and plugging the wall charger into an AC outlet. It takes four hours to fully charge the battery. A full charge provides up to 15 hours of use. The OAE screener uses four buttons to control all functions. Push the button that corresponds to the highlighted arrow on the screen to move through tasks. The up key always brings the screener back to either the previous menu or the main menu and is used to access the print command from the main menu. Now the display. New to the 395 series, the number of tests on the device will appear in the upper left hand corner of the display. Next, you have the day, month, time, and AM or PM. You should set the date and time before using the screener. If you perform and save a test before setting the date and time, you will not be able to change the date on the printout. And finally, the battery status, which displays the amount of charge remaining. Next, install the probe. Insert the probe's HDMI connector into the socket on the top of the screener. A clear probe tube must be attached to the probe head before an ear tip is applied. Insert a new probe tube into the probe head until it is fully seated and snaps securely into place. To remove the probe tube, grasp the tube and pull gently away from the probe head with a slight twist. Probe tubes should be replaced immediately when they become clogged, but not necessarily with each screening. Finally, Place the probe holder near the end of probe cable at the HDMI connector end. Gently press the probe cable into the probe holder close to the point of the probe head. Return the probe to the probe holder for safekeeping. Now that the device is set up and charging, here's a brief overview on navigating the screening setup features. Please refer to the directions for use included on the CD for more detail. To turn the device on, press the down button located below the screener's display screen. The green ready light remains constant, indicating that the screener is ready to use. To access the device settings menus, press the down arrow until the date and time menu appears. Press the change arrow and hold until the green light blinks. The device settings menus become available. Additional setup menu options include wireless device pairing, clearing test results, automatic shutdown interval, save mode, minimum amplitude value, clock mode, graph style, normative data for DPOAE, language, and reset to default settings. You should inspect the ear canal opening to make sure there is no blockage or drainage. This will also help you select the right size ear tip for your patient. Here's what Welch Allen single-use ear tips come standard with your system. They are made to fit all ear sizes, from infant to geriatric, in sizes ranging from 3 mm to 15 mm. Push and slightly twist the ear tip onto the probe tube. Ensure that the ear tip is fully seated on the probe. There should be no gaps between the ear tip and the collar of the probe head. To remove the ear tip, grasp the probe tube gently at the base and slightly twist it while pulling at the ear tip off of the probe. Grasping the base of the probe tube will prevent it from being inadvertently pulled out of the probe head along with the ear tip. The OAE screener provides two protocol options, DP4S 
testing at a maximum time of 4 seconds per frequency, and DP2S, testing at a maximum of 2 seconds per frequency. The last protocol that was used is shown on the main menu and can be modified in the Change Protocol screen. Press either left or right test arrow to select the ear to be tested. When inserting the ear tip, it is important to ensure proper placement and seal by straightening the upward S curve of the external canal. For older children and adults, grasp the upper part of the auricle and pull it up and back to straighten the external canal. When testing newborns and infants, you'll grasp the lower part of the auricle and pull it down and back. Gently insert the ear tip into the ear canal. It should fit snugly and comfortably. Note, the best test results are obtained when an ear tip is inserted into the ear canal instead of flush with the ear canal. After selecting which ear to test, the auto start probe check begins automatically. The probe check display shows a cone visual on screen, larger at the left and tapering toward the right, representing the ear canal volume from left to right. The vertical white bar appears, indicating the measured ear canal volume. Adjust the ear tip position and tip size until the indicator falls within the green area and remains stable. The auto start check helps improve accuracy, ensuring that probe is selected properly. Repeat these steps to test the opposite ear. When testing is complete, the green ready light is illuminated and a pass or refer result for the tested ear appears. The results screen indicates the test ear and gives the results of the test. You may also see noisy, no seal, or fit error, which means the test was not completed. The results are automatically saved in memory as soon as the test completes, even if the screener is turned off or the battery is depleted. The detailed test results are displayed as a graph. The default view is a signal to ratio, or SNR, bar graph. You can also choose to view the results as a value graph. Utilize the data manager software to save and review test results. The optional thermal MPT2 printer allows you to print results directly. You may also print from the data manager software using your PC. Refer to the electronic directions for use documents included on the CD that comes with your system. Wirelessly pairing the screener to the printer. The wireless pairing menu enables you to pair the screener with a wireless device, such as the MPT2 thermal printer for printing test results. To pair your OAE with the thermal printer, turn on both the screener and the printer. Navigate to the screener to the wireless device menu. Press the left or right control panel button to initiate discovery of available wireless devices. The screener searches for available wireless devices for approximately 15 seconds. During this time, the message, please wait, appears on the screen. The yellow LED light flashes. A device beginning with PRT should appear in the list of devices. Press the down control panel button to pair the screener and printer. The printer confirms pairing by initiating a printout. Wellchallen recommends annual device calibration. Refer to your directions for use and other reference materials included with the OAE Hearing Screener System for detail on device setup and instruction.